This video is called Manufacturing Nostalgia or How to Time Travel. I'm going to eventually do one of these for each path to erudition, so check that video out if you want to know more on that. But let's get into it. Nostalgia, as one of the five fundamental emotions, is highly sought after. It's a rare feeling that often leaves us changed for days. So powerful is the sense of reminiscence. It's both sad and painful to look back, and happy and fulfilling to remember. It's deep and longful, wistful and sentimental. It's hard to describe with our language because English doesn't worry too much about the past in a meaningful way. Nostalgia doesn't really define itself very well. It's kind of a placeholder for something vague, and there aren't too many effective ways of describing what nostalgia represents. And this has an impact on culture, but I won't get into that now. Just understanding that our language has few words for the past and our association with it, so the culture has little conception or involvement in it as well. But that does not stop us from being able to explore it. It just may make this a little confusing. So think of nostalgia as being a door you can access in your memory. The door contains a film of a past event along with the emotions of that event. Now this is different than just remembering or reminiscing. This is more of a whole body memory experience that links you to the past. That nostalgia film clip has a certain filter effect unique to nostalgic memories. You know when you watch a movie and the main character goes back to this place that they haven't been to in a long time, they get these vivid flashbacks as they trace their hands along old things from their past. You might be thinking this is classic Hollywood exaggeration, but for once, or one of the few things that isn't really an exaggeration, nostalgia can be so powerful you hallucinate. Entering these doors of memory literally transports you with all of your senses into that point of your life. It's really like time travel, and you will always have those memories you can return to and visit. If anything about nostalgia interests you, we can actually learn how to manufacture it. I don't mean to artificially get these nostalgic feelings. I mean, how can we reliably create or manufacture these doorways so that we can visit them and experience this nostalgic time travel? There are certain links to memory which are extremely strong and connective. The strongest for humans is our smell. Scent has the greatest attachment to memory. It is through scent that a nostalgic memory can be hallucinated. You'll experience this naturally every now and then. A uh, smell from your childhood, like the smell of your home. Maybe it's certain food being cooked for a special day. Maybe it's just the changing seasons, a perfume of someone, or just their natural smell of someone you knew or something you used to wear. Maybe it's a car smell, the smell of the beach, the mountains, whatever it may be. You'll acquire plenty over your lifetime, though you may not ever think or know which ones are nostalgic. So this is how to manufacture nostalgia. Whatever you are going through in your life right now, understand two things. One, it will change eventually. Maybe a week, a month, maybe it will be years, but it will change. Your circumstances may not even change, but your perception and demeanor and mindset will. And number two, don't ever try to block out a time period, no matter how traumatic or uncomfortable it may be. Your body is your mind, and you will wear your trauma in your body. It will grow rigid and sickly over time. Your body records everything even if you forget it. So it's better to keep your worst memories because then at least you learn and grow from them. Because what's done is done, you may as well have gained something from it. I say that so you know it's important to manufacture nostalgia for every point or stage in your life, not just the good ones. And this is what you can do. There are a few methods of creating these doors, and you can do one or multiple. 
since scent is the strongest, we'll start with that. Take a look at yourself and where you are at and how you feel. Figure out your mood and your current mindset, the one you seem to be at on a day-to-day -day basis. Now go to some place that sells candles and find a scent you feel represents this feeling, this stage of your life. It should be a new scent you haven't really experienced before, something unique to this event. Now buy that candle and every day, even if it's just for a minute, if you're trying to conserve it, burn it and smell it and or just leave it on in the background. Another method is music. Music is powerful for emotions and the one you'll probably relate to the most. Same thing as the candle. Find the song or album that captures how you feel and play that song every day multiple times a day. There are other methods like TV shows or books, but these tend to be harder to do over a long period. But if it is a longer book or series you can read or watch a bit at a time, just whatever you can associate yourself with during that time period that you can do repetitiously. So you've done this for weeks, maybe months, let's say. At some point you'll change. You'll be done with the music or show or tired of the candle scent. It will be a natural end and you may not even recognize it for weeks that you've changed. It's subtle if we don't keep track of it. But what you've done is create a doorway to that stage of your life. You've psychologically reinforced that moment with a state of consciousness. Think of alcohol. If you learn something intoxicated, you'll have a better memory of that the next time you're intoxicated, but not as much if you're sober, and vice versa with any state of consciousness. The state you learn something is the state you memorize it the best in. There is familiarity to memory and learning. So we talked about doorways and how they represent nostalgic memories, rooms of the past in which all senses and emotions are felt uniquely. The nostalgia is different than even when you experienced it or when you try to remember it. There's an added quality and that's what nostalgia is. That's the doorway. So the nostalgia is a doorway. And imagine these doorways exist along a hallway. They're in a hallway and you have multiple hallways. And each hallway is a state of consciousness and a state of being. You are constantly transitioning from one hallway to another, and sometimes a door may even be connected to two hallways. You may have a hallway of summer, of spring, winter, autumn, maybe a hallway of vacations, of intoxication, of being high, a hallway of working out, of road trips, of relationships. The hallway is a persona, and you will revisit personas and transition from one to another naturally and constantly. You may have a persona you haven't had in 10 years, and it hits you so powerfully, you might think to yourself, oh, I, I love this version of me, or I can't believe I forgot I used to be like this, or, or something along those lines. But you suddenly, in certain periods of your life, will be reflecting on older personas because you are re-entering that persona from the past, that hallway. And all your ideas, moods, and interests will be regained, you will have those again that you may not have had since the last time you were in that persona. Mostly, and tragically, we aren't aware of this. We are not very in touch with ourselves. We wonder why we always act how we do at certain events, moods, or times of the year. And you're not just you, you're a transitory colony of organs and organisms. You're a multitude of personas your dynamic ecosystem. So the more set in your ways you become, the more rigid your body is, and you become stuck in one hallway or one persona. This doesn't happen because we get older. It just happens over time when we block out memories. We close those doors and hallways, creating rigidity, preventing airflow. The hallways are spiraling and twisting and folding. Of course, the image in your head may look like this, and that is correct. The mind works how the brain looks. It is a labyrinth and navigable. 
we aren't our brain all at once, it must be moved through and accessed. I'm going to talk about meditation in a nearby video, so hold on to that because it is important. Now that you've changed personas and hallways, at any point in your life, you can time travel to that door you manufactured. When you hear that song, or smell that candle, or TV show, you will return to those feelings and the memory of that stage you connected with. If you want to take this a step forward, if you're someone who is emotionally in pursuit of nostalgia all the time, make a journal and record the time period. Just ballpark it if you need to. How you felt, what you were going through. Just in shorthand, enough to make sense. You can do it in your phone notes or get a specific journal notebook. And most importantly though, write down the key to the door. What song or what scent you used. Now you'll be able to visit that at any point, knowing exactly what key goes to which door, and you'll have access to that for the rest of your life. If you ever want to feel that certain way, you have that memory connection to the particular song or candle smell that you manufactured it with. So actually, after I finish the script for the video, which we could spend hours on this subject, um, but I wanted to bring up two more things real quick. The first is ancestors. Nostalgia can transcend your life and memory. You can visit a place you've never been and be hit with that nostalgia. Our culture is very disconnected to our ancestors for a number of reasons. But this lack of transcendental nostalgia gives us a very poor sense of nature, um, connections to the land and history, which shows how self-driven and abusive we are to each other and the earth. I believe nostalgia is a memory held by microbes like fungi and bacteria, so your ancestral memory is a colony of microbes living on through you, and you have to reconnect, oftentimes physically, with what your ancestors had as well. But that's just where my current theories are in exploring, so if you're not familiar with my content, that probably won't make sense to you. The second thing is another product of the cultural lack of memory. Right now, most of our memes and media and entertainment in general is all about monetizing your nostalgia. We are incapable of connecting to our past, so the big businesses will do it for us for a price. Half of our memes are just references to people's childhood or recite videos. Our movies are remakes of our childhood movies. There have been very few original movies out in the recent decade, or decades. When we, as a culture, don't get enough of this fundamental emotion, we become possessive of past events, we become critical of them, or we want to own and associate ourselves with certain past things. Like, oh, if you had this thing growing up, you're this type of person now. We have a fetish for pointing out the past right now because we are so disconnected to it individually. A healthy balance would mean having plenty of doors of nostalgia you can visit. So manufacture nostalgia, or your corporate overlords will do it for you. Thanks for watching. Peace out.